We are back, ladies and gentlemen, this time with a slightly different situation. This time we are going to have the big, uh, the rematch here. The first game was, uh, the first game was, uh, Reinar versus Viserai, but this time, uh, C. Honigman stand on Reinar, but Patigo has switched over to Azalea. Uh, so let's check this out. The Ranger this time. Uh, and let's see. So Azalea... Azalea is not very good, um, normally. My inter key is having some trouble there. Uh, so I'm just tying the players. They are good to go. This time it's going to be... Oh, and it's a red liner deck. So we're going to have a red liner ranger versus a brute here in classic constructed. Unconventional deck for sure, but let's see whether or not it... Uh, let's see whether or not this ranger build can prevail. Okay. Rangers, uh, Ranger is not considered the, the finest uh, c class in the game. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay. Now, interestingly, Brute chose to equip the Iron Rock Gauntlet here. All right. That was a some attack that got blocked. Now, Ravenous Ravel coming in here for four with Go Again. Their top card was a red. So the way that this... Uh, so. If this works the same way as some of the other Azalea decks that I've seen using the red liner, what's going to happen here is almost everything in this deck is going to cost zero with a few cards that cost one. Um, and then as a result of that, it's going to be a it's going to be some really big attacks, uh, or I'm sorry, some really small attacks, but a lot of them potentially. So poison the tip until end of turn, arrows you control gain. If this hits a hero, they discard a card. I think he plays it just for the reload. He reloads a Promise of Plenty. If this hits, each hero who doesn't have a card in their arsenal puts the top card of their deck face down into arsenal. It was played from arsenal, so it gets go again. So he had four go again, now he has three go again. If it hits, it will refill his arsenal, which will potentially allow him to do another dangerous attack. Uh, it is going to get blocked out, though, to prevent that with a barraging Bighorn being used on the defense, and then he's going to put a Plunder Run in Arsenal. So this this is going to be, I think, a very unusual game for those who are used to seeing Death Dealer builds. I've been playing around with a Redliner build myself with all this zero-cost stuff. It's actually pretty cool. It's definitely stronger than you might think. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to prevail against this Brute, but we'll have to see. So a swing here coming in for four. And so red liner uh, is you can actually put a, an arrow card from your hand face up into your arsenal for free, and that's all it does. So this does not seem all that good, but uh, it can be used in conjunction with a lot of zero cost stuff to have a deck where it's just like, I just do not care what I have in terms of pitch. I'm going to be able to play card after card. And Skullbone Crosswrap being used here. Uh, Optane, he sees an endless arrow. Going to leave it on top. So Skullbone Crosswrap, once per turn action, turn a face down card in your arsenal face up. Opt one with go again. Wow, he's not playing the Plunder Run. That's a little surprising to me, but I think he may be going for the Azalea top deck with it. Not entirely sure. Five go again off the E-Strike. See, I think I would have played the Plunder Run here and then used Red Liner to put the Endless Arrow. Uh, and then, So I would have done Plunder Run into E-Strike 8, draw and hit. And then you can still redliner into the endless arrow, um, and you can potentially knock the death whistle into whatever arrow you want. So I think it was a little odd for him not to play it. Oh, you know what he's gonna do? I see what he's going for now. I think he's gonna play the plunder run and use it to uh, dominate the endless arrow to guarantee that that's gonna hit. Uh, yeah, so he uses that, and he's gonna swap an endless arrow for another endless arrow. Yep. And then he plays that one. Now, the, so the thing is, I think I would have rather had the potential stuff earlier, but he's going in for seven dominate, and he'll draw on hit, and this will go back in hand, potentially. 
Yeah, Raven the Red says, I think he wants to dominate with the draw. But the thing is, the draw from Plunder Run actually applies to both attacks. So it might have led to the first attack being blocked up completely, but then the second attack would be more likely to gain in anyway. Um, so blocked for only two, Plunder Run triggers for the draw and the Endless Arrow back to hand. Uh, and we do see a copy of Take Aim, which is now going to be put into Arsenal. And Ranger draws on up. So this is a this is a very unorthodox deck in some ways, but it is actually quite strong, at least potentially. It's going to be interesting to see how our brute player responds to this stuff. He's using that arsenal card there, and it is a copy of Primeval Bellow. Discards a random card, and that does trigger an Intimidate. Next brute attack this turn, gaining plus five. And then he's just going to have to pitch that Alpha Rampage and use his Tunic to swing his club. But the club is at base strength 5 because he discarded a card. And then it's actually plus 5, so a club swing for 10. That's not something you see every day. Weapon swing for 10, pretty scary. Uh, and with a card intimidated. Now one of the downsides of this Ranger deck is that, is that it's armor, like most Ranger decks. You know, this is really a weakness of Ranger in general. Like most Ranger decks, uh, his armor is really bad, and he has a lot of cards that block for two. So his defense is not that good, and he just says, no blocks, take ten. So, going to be a, a uh, an interesting situation. We might see this game turn into a race, which could lead to a win for our Brute player if we see a big intimidate, uh, big, big, big old intimidate turn going off, but we're going to have to see whether or not that's the case. Okay, so then there's a... Uh, there's a Glint from the cross wrap. Uh, take aim is used and it reloads and then plays a plunder run. Wow. So the next ranger attack action card you play this turn gains plus two and it gains a plus three and it draws a card if it hits. Then red liner used to put the endless arrow in and then the endless arrow is fired. Oh man, and he's going to be able to play that razor reflex. Wow. This is really crazy. So this is actually coming in for 9. If it hits, it goes back to hand. So if it's coming in at strength 9. If it hits, it will go back to hand, and it will draw a card. And he's probably going to play that Razor Reflex on it, putting it up to a total of 12. And then it will also get the ability to go again on hit. And that could just be devastating. Raven the Red says, did he forget his banished card? There we go. Haha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, he forgot to take it back immediately. I think it was the Endless Arrow. Yeah, so block for nine, and now we're going to see that Razor Reflex coming out for the plus three, sneaking in there, find all spring tunic used, Razor Reflex, plus three, and if it hits, go again. No, the only defense reaction in hand is Reckless Swing, which can't be played because it discards as an additional cost. So this is going to sneak in, three damage, card draw from Plunder Run, and the Endless Arrow back to hand. Oh, and he has a poison the tips. Oh no, this could be really bad for for C Honigman here. Poison the tips could be played until end of turn. Arrows you control gain. If this hits a hero, they discard a card, and then that arrow would be able to come in there. There's not really anything that could stop it. He is gonna go here for the um. He's gonna go here for the uh. Knock the death whistle. Search your deck for an arrow card. Reveal it. Shuffle it and put it on top of your deck. Reload. Uh. He he puts a searing shot on top of his deck. Then he's going to reload. Uh, then he's probably going to play that Poison the Tips. Oh, yeah, he reloads the Poison the Tips. Then I think... Oh, no, he doesn't play it. Why didn't he Why didn't he play it? Oh, he wants. I think he wants to have the Endless Arrow left for Arsenal. Okay. Well, so he's not going to force a discard on the one card, but he is going to come in with four Dominate, the, and it will get an additional plus one. Uh, so this is actually a bonus one damage uh, if it hits, because if Searing Shot hits, they lose one. So nasty, nasty. Ranger hitting hard. Reckless swing pitched for a club. The brute player though is not gonna stop attacking. He needs to. He needs, he knows that he needs to put some pressure of his own on. Uh, there is the endless arrow in Arsenal here. We could see rapid fire. Um, rapid fire looks like a good play this turn. So rapid fire here would be you, until end of turn arrows you control gain go again. That would allow him to potentially do multiple endless arrow shots. We could also see three of a kind being played. Um, Raven says coax a commotion in three of a kind. My guy, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens here. I think we could see another. So this is this is fun for me also because normally Ranger is not very good in my opinion. 
And so he, he sees a Nimbleism Red on top of his deck. Probably not something that he's going to want to get the Endless Arrow out for, but I could be wrong. It's possible he wants to do a huge coax. I don't know. I don't think I don't think I don't think you'd do that. I don't think you do that. Uh yeah, he's gonna put it to the bottom. Okay. Rapid fire being played. So arrows you control until end of turn, arrows you control gain go again. Endless arrow coming in uh, for four go four go again, and if it hits it'll go back to hand. Um, pretty annoying here. I think it's likely. I think it's likely that we're gonna see this blocked. I think it's. Oh, and he goes for a double block. I'm a little surprised. I think a block plus a piece of equipment would have been better than the double block there. Um, but he may be trying to save his equipment for more important on hit effects. So then the coax a commotion being played. Uh, just just played from hand there. So coax a commotion. If this hits, choose any number. Each hero creates a quicken. Each hero draws a card, or each hero gains one. Uh, so I think probably C. Honigman's going to let this hit and then on his turn throw out that CNC. CNC is an excellent card against Ranger, and I think that's what we're going to see from him uh, trying to break his opponent's arsenal. Wow, both players getting a Quicken token. Uh, I'm not sure how prudent it is to do that against Brute, um, but we will have to see. So these Quicken tokens basically give your next attack go again. In this case, I think it's actually pretty good because if uh, if C. Honigman does go for the Command and Conquer, he's not going to have the energy to do anything else and the Quicken token will just be wasted. Whereas uh, our Ranger player might well be able to use that to throw out multiple attacks. Very, very interesting. I'm, I'm totally rooting for Ranger here. Uh, no, C. Honigman, if you're watching this, you know, no disrespect... Uh, I've seen I've seen your stuff, but I've seen your stuff before. You know we've played some games. Ooh, and he's opting. So I don't know why he puts the. I think it is an error there to put the CNC into Arsenal instead of the Springboard Somersault. Um, but I think he's opting to save that for an opportunity to better use his Nimbleism. Uh, and the Cross Rat being used. Top card is a Ravenous Rabble Red. I would definitely rather have that than Three of a Kind. Uh, three of a kind is actually really awkward in my opinion. It draws three cards, but then you can only put them in arsenal. So I would totally, I would totally go ravenous rabble, uh, red there instead. The problem is it, de uh, yeah. So you could play your, yes, yeah, so you can play your scar for a scar first. So it g it gains go again from the from the uh, quicken token. So the quicken token isn't wasted. Then you can do the ravenous rabble. Yeah. So uh, quicken token used. Uh, scar for a scar for four go again. Even though he has more life. Annoying situation for his opponent. But yeah, uh, I'm totally rooting. I am totally rooting for the Ranger player here. It's not that I it's not that I don't like C. Honigman or that I don't like Brute. It's just that Ranger has been such an underdog that I really want to see Ranger succeed. Uh, okay, so then a Springboard Somersault played from hand, only blocking two. Um, three of a kind probably going to be sent away with Azalea's ability here. Yep, exactly as expected. Azalea's ability used Ravenous Rabble now on top, on uh, the Arsenal. That's going to be played, and it reveals a red, of course, because basically this entire deck is red. Um, some versions of this deck have like three blue cards, and that's it. And this one I think has some yellow also. So you know another four with go again. Uh, the attacks coming in. The attacks coming in fast. A lot of pressure. And I think we're going to see, uh, I think we're then going to see this red nimbleism being played for plus three, and then red liner used to put the searing shot in arsenal, then it fires for seven, and if it hits, it does an additional one, and then the promise of plenty going into arsenal for the future. So hyper-aggressive turn here from our ranger player. I think he's going to be throwing together, uh, so he's already swung for eight, and I think he's going to swing for seven more with a potential plus one. So that's like, you know, 15, 15 raw damage, maybe 16 and setting him up for the next turn. That is really strong. Um, so, yeah, no blocking there, it looks like. Looks like the damage is just going to get on through. Four damage. Our brute player is getting real low. Red liner used. Yep, Searing Shot in Arsenal. There's the Nimbleism for the plus three. Next attack action card with cost one or less you play this turn gains plus three. And then the uh, Searing Shot, Strength four. If it hits a hero, they lose one. So Strength seven attack. And if it hits, it's going to be an additional... Wow. Uh, it's blocked for five with equipment. And then we're probably going to see that Springboard Somersault played from hand. 
uh, to block the remaining two. No, you know what he's going to do? He's going to do E-Strike into C and C. What? Yeah, he seemed to think that was blocking seven. Uh, so, yeah, so he, I think he thought that was blocking seven, but it definitely does not. Uh, so he ends up deciding he's going to block five and take three. He's really getting whittled down here, but he now has the opportunity to do E-Strike 7 into CNC. Patago says, I feel a big turn coming, and he is right. This is going to be a big turn for our uh, Brute player. Let's see if he can get control of the game. E-Strike 7 go again with the uh, with the Nimbleism. He could have also done E-Strike 5 draw a card uh, go again, and I think that might have been better here as having the extra card would allow him to put a card in Arsenal, potentially even that Springboard Somersault. So I do think I would have gone for the card draw instead of the 2 damage, but it's possible he's just trying to do as much as possible to get his opponent into the 1-hit kill range. Um, if I am Patag Patago has a kind of awkward hand I might just take this honestly Raven the Red says that quicken token feels bad now yeah it was good for him but now it's going to be even better for his opponent I think uh, giving a scar for a scar go again when it didn't have it is nice but giving a C and C go again here is going to be pretty annoying uh, he just takes it, 7 damage, and there's the CNC for 6. He strike, in, he strike 7 into CNC. Very very scary turn. Let's see if it's enough, though. So the funny thing is he could actually block this. Um, so he could do... Uh, so he could block 2 with his Perch Grapplers and then block 2 with 2 of his cards that block 2. And then he could do um, Promise of Plenty, take aim into that arrow. Uh, he says, lame. Yeah, so I think I would block with the two Promise of Plenty in hand, plus the Perch Grapplers. That would block all six of it. No, he's just going to eat it. Okay. I'm surprised that he just ate it there, but uh, I guess he didn't want to use his equipment, maybe. This does put him into the... This does put... Whoops, sorry, guys. I'm not trying to mess with the camera like that. Sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, so then he's... Okay, so he's going to do take aim, uses that sees a copy of rapid fire probably not so useful he's going to send it to the bottom then he can play this promise of plenty yeah coming in uh strength three the problem is this will if this hits it will actually give his opponent a card in arsenal two which makes it a lot more questionable um so three go again and if it hits both players will get a card in arsenal which could have a very unexpected outcome So yeah. So yeah, so take aim here is only for ranger attack action cards, all of which are arrows right now. Potentially there could be some ranger attack action card in the future that isn't an arrow, but that's not what's happening. So our, our brute player does opt to block this, not wanting to give both players a card in arsenal. Um, okay. So then redliner probably going to be used here for the uh, remorseless into arsenal. And tunic used to fire off the remorseless. So remorseless, one of the, one of the premium arrows here for ranger. Uh, it was put into the arsenal face up, so defense reactions can't be played from arsenal against it. Not that that matters. If it hits until a uh, hero until the end of their next turn, whenever they play an action card, they lose one life, and it is also coming in for eight because it has the plus three uh, from the take aim. So scary eight damage. Eight damage there. Uh, the action, the play an action card part probably doesn't matter that much because it looks like his game plan is probably just going to be a club swing. Oh, but maybe he was going to go for Awakening Bellow. Yeah, that's tough. All right, he does go for a single block. He's probably going to just pitch, swing the club, and put the pummel in Arsenal. Oh, wait, no, he can actually play the pummel using his tunic. That could be an opportunity to get some big damage in. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. This has been, uh... So the previous game that I streamed between these two players was very slow. We had several turns where both players were just building up and not really doing anything. Uh, this game, the this game, it's looking very different. 
Uh, instead of being a very slow game, it's been a very aggressive game. We're now already at 6-12, to 12, and I think the game time elapsed so far is about half, maybe less than half of what the previous game took in its entirety. I think we're going to probably see a conclusion relatively quickly. Very different from what uh, from how that previous game looked. So Club coming in for four, but he is going to be able to use Tunic to get a second energy, play that red pummel. Yeah, here it comes, red pummel. So it's going to be a total of eight. Four damage plus four, so eight damage. It's gonna, But unfortunately, this may actually play into his opponent's hands because now... Our Ranger player is actually at lower life, and this Scar for a Scar in hand has go again. So I think that that might have been a bit of a backfire. He's got to play. He's got to play the Scar for a Scar first. He's got to play the Scar for a Scar as his first attack, because if he plays something else as his first attack, okay. So top card is a Pathing Helix. He's got to play the Scar for a Scar as his first attack, because if he hits, no, ah, uh, yeah, it's a bit. It's a mistake here. It's a mistake here from our um. It's a mistake here for our ranger player, I feel, because playing this Promise of Plenty first, if it actually hits, is going to turn off the go again on that Scar for a Scar. You typically want to lead in with Scar for a Scar instead. Raven the Red says this ranger hand is so aggressive. I don't actually think this ranger hand is that good, but I might be missing something. I wonder if he's actually going to use his Perch Grapplers. Two damage blocked. Okay. No. One damage, two damage blocked. Okay, so he blocks two. I think he's trying to get the arsenal trigger to go off because he sees that he has a big combo potentially, and he's trying to get his own stuff set up for a potentially finishing the game next turn. So this Pathing Helix going into the arsenal. Oh man, he's going for the Perch Grapplers. This is very rare. Until end of turn, face up arrow cards played from Arsenal gain, go again. He then fires the Pathing Helix for four, go again. If this hits and you have no cards in Arsenal, you may put a card from your hand face down into your Arsenal. So he could use that to set up another one of his arrows. I do think that he has... Um... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a huge gaff. Good point. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, so Perch Grapplers is even worse than I realized. It actually only works on face-up arrows instead of just arrows. This card is extremely poor relative to some others. Like, it's almost never used for its energy. It's often just used to block, and its blocking isn't even that good. I think, I think if this did work the way that he thought, he could potentially have a huge turn. But unfortunately, um, it's, it's turning into a big misplay. And I think it's probably going to cost him the game. Now, to be fair, he also should have played that Scar for a Scar, but I think I think he's going to die next turn on the strength of having misplayed that, unfortunately. Uh, Honigman offers to run it back. So they, they, may be, they may be taking this back to allow him to do like a real turn here. It's a tough situation because I do think that if they play it correctly, he's basically just lost the game with that. Um, but I actually think he could potentially win the game this turn if he gets a normal turn. Yeah, he, so he decline, he declines the take back. So just coming in for four with no go again. Uh, and that's probably, that is probably going to end the, end the game um, as I think our Brute player can just block with one card. And then um, our Brute player is probably going to be able to just block with one card or even no cards and then come in with a game-ending attack. Uh, I, could, I could be wrong, but I think he's going to be able to do a multiple Intimidate turn. Raven the Red says, Very rough. Lots of people make the face-up mistake with Ranger and realize Ranger is even worse than they thought. Yeah, it's, it's sad. Uh, so I was thinking, oh man, a rare situation where Perch Grappler's ability is actually, is actually going to be great. Just kidding. It's even worse than I thought because it's only face-up cards. Pretty rough really takes a lot of setup for that to be a valuable ability um yeah so i i do think that our ranger player is going to meet uh meet his end probably on this next turn um or rather our ranger character is going to meet his end the player is probably going to be fine 
but the um, it's going to be very difficult to come back. I think after this, uh, it's going to be very difficult to come back after this error. All brute has to do is block one and then throw out a huge turn, and I think that's exactly what we're going to see. So I think what he was hoping is that he could path and helix another card into Arsenal, then play that card with Gil again, and he did make a mistake by not playing Scar for a Scar first, which I mentioned earlier. Um, Raven says, Funnily enough, a promise of plenty hadn't hit, they could have had a good turn still using Redliner and Bracers to put Arrow's face up. Yep, agreed completely. Yeah, Path and Helix actually puts the card face down into Arsenal, so it's not even that good with... Uh, it's kind of anti-synergistic there. Which is kind of weird because they're both in the same set, but yeah, so a little, little anti-synergy there. Yep, and then here is Barraging Beatdown into Barraging Bighorn. Barraging Bighorn discards a Massacre, which gives a bonus Intimidate. So there's one Intimidate... And then there's another Intimidate, and then, yeah, so three cards Intimidated. Uh, and then this is going to be, the plus two is basically Unstoppable, and this is coming in, so this is coming in at strength eight. Um, he is, yeah, it's not going to be possible to block the bonus damage, so it's going to be eight damage. Uh, no resources are floating, so there isn't going to be a fall, or there's one resource floating, but that's not enough. Uh, I don't know what happened to his tunic. I guess maybe he blocked with it at some point. It just isn't there. Um yeah, I don't know what happened to his tunic. I zoomed out to see if he put it to the side or something. Um, but yeah, I think our I think our brute player can actually only or our ranger player can actually only block four here because he used the perch grapplers. Uh, so he can block two plus one for uh, skull cap plus one for the tunic, blocking four, taking eight, and dying. And Patigo says that's game. Not reading perch killed me. Yep. So I think unfortunately for Patigo there, he was actually doing really well, and I thought he was potentially going to take the game there with that turn. But the misplay on the perch grapplers, that was uh, that. Was that. Uh, and Rupa says he blocked with Tunic. Okay. Yeah, I think I, I, think I missed that. Um, or didn't realize it's important until later. Yeah, very interesting situation. So Redliner Ranger almost making it there. But uh, a, a little mistake at the end meant that uh, C. Honigman had the opportunity to do a huge turn instead of having to keep use, using all of his stuff for defense. And that was enough to end the game, unfortunately. Very close game. And uh, that, uh, you know, it goes to show, you know, Ranger might have more might have more to it than you might think. Uh, unfortunately, Perch Grapplers is an even worse card than you might realize. But, um, yeah, you know, Patigo will probably learn from that. And I think maybe we'll see some lethal gameplay from his Ranger in the future. Yeah, I think, he, I think he's showing what could have been... And I, I do think if he had played that Scar for a Scar, he would have been in a better situation also. Um, but yeah, tough. So Pathing is actually really anti-synergistic here. But yeah. So he was hoping to do this huge thing for 19 damage. Um, I don't think he actually could have done it because Pathian Helix doesn't work the way that he seemed to be thinking here. Uh, but yeah, so Perch Grapplers only works on face-up cards. Very, like, I, I don't know why this ability costs to... Uh, yeah, I don't know why this card has Blade Break. It's really, really bad relative to the armor that some other classes have. But, uh, yeah. Unfortunate situation for our Ranger player. But that's how it's going to go. Thanks for watching, guys. We are going to close down the stream. I should have a scheduled stream tomorrow at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Probably going to show some of my own gameplay, though I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do exactly at that time. And uh, may do some other just, you know, streams on the fly if there are cool games going on or similar. But that was two interesting games with Brute versus Runeblade and now Brute versus Ranger. Both some kind of uh, unusual decks. And sadly, this, this one was looking like it might be a victory for the underdog Ranger, but things went awry at the last minute. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back later with some more Flesh and Blood content. If you want to read any written articles about Flesh and Blood, check out my strategy blog at tower9.com. Uh, the spelled the way that it is in the bottom right of the screen there. But uh, until next time, guys, Tower Number 9 signing out. I will catch you guys later.